I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. And before we get started on the no half step in hockey coverage, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you're good and educated about the show, you can click on that merchandise tab. It's going to take you straight to our class classic logo t-shirt our pride logo t-shirt our special event t-shirts and all the classic gimmicks you've come to know and love from the renegades of puck socks wall art throw pillows bed sets all still available in our online store easiest way to say it is we've sold out so that you can buy in stick taps everyone who's bought some merch over the last couple of weeks social media is of critical importance to this independent hockey operation so please listen up here's how you can help us out it doesn't cost you a thing and it doesn't take you but a second please give us a follow on social media on twitter on facebook on instagram or perhaps even on tiktok you can follow our youtube channel where you can find renegades of puck tv thank you so much to all of our recent subscribers and of course audio platforms just search renegades of puck in your preferred podcast platform today or try a couple of these examples google stitcher spotify amazon and we are on several other platforms thanks so much to the full press nhl network stick taps love and respect more renegades are hearing the show than ever thanks to full press NHL. When it comes to becoming a partner of the show, you can do that by going to Venmo. Just search Renegades of Puck or scan the QR code that's currently on your screen. Thanks to generous Renegades just like you, we've been able to make significant upgrades here around the bunker and around the entirety of the operation. Thank you so much. We sure do appreciate it. Every dollar goes a long way to helping the Renegades of Puck in achieving our next set of goals and our next set of very ambitious projects. You know, we're always planning something with the Renegades of Puck. Now, listen, I know it's time for the no half step in hockey coverage. So let me get to the goods. It's time for operation number 741. That's right. Show number 741 for the Renegades of Puck. And at this moment in hockey history, the Nashville Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division. They have an overall record of 39-30-8 and eight on home ice, which is where their next game will take place. They have a record of 20. They've recently picked up their 20th victory of the season on home ice. 14-4, 216 goals scored on the season, 227 given up. That's a goal differential of minus 11. Now, the Nashville Predators are still very very much alive in the wild card race but let me update you on the central division because it is very very curious at the very top of the division so Colorado Dallas Minnesota one two three all at 98 points at this time of the season so it's a three-team weave all the way down to the final minutes of the season to determine who's going to be your central division champion and more than likely your number two seed in the western conference so right now the number two seed Colorado Avalanche if they were to win the central division would face off against the Seattle Kraken in their first ever playoff series while wild card one right now would be or, or should be I should say the number one seed overall in the western conference looks like it will be the Vegas Golden Knights they will take on the second wildcard team at this moment in time it's the Winnipeg Jets but it could be the Calgary Flames or even those Nashville Predators so out into the number three in the Central Division then comes Winnipeg at 89 points then comes Nashville at 86 the little E has now come for St. Louis Arizona and Chicago so those three teams are done for the season when it comes to that wild card race now Seattle has 94 points with five games to go in the season the Winnipeg Jets have 89 points with five games to go in the season so Seattle is very close to clinching that number one wild card spot so it's come down to Winnipeg Calgary and Nashville to determine who is going to be the second wild card Winnipeg holds that spot right now with 89 points five games remaining Calgary just behind them at 87 points but only four games remaining and then the Nashville Predators at 86 points with five games remaining now why are the national predators still very much alive in the wild card race well it is absolutely because of the game after this next game the carolina hurricanes will be at bridgestone arena on thursday but then the nashville predators saturday in winnipeg and then monday in calgary so they have two games head-to-head to close out the road schedule for the season that are against the two teams directly above them in the standings and the two teams they would need to pass 
overall to make a wild card spot. With a game in hand over the Calgary Flames, the Nashville Predators, by defeating them head to head on Monday, could not only surpass Calgary, but could go a long way to putting them out of the playoff picture. That gets you all caught up on the Central Division. That gets you caught up on the wild card. And I've given you the Nashville Predators schedule and record. Let's talk about the Nashville Predators. Next opponent, it is the Carolina Hurricanes. It'll be the second and final time this season the Preds and the Canes will play. The Canes are having another impressive season. They have an overall record of 50, 18, and 9. 109 points is good for first overall in the Metropolitan Division. Now, they do not have everything locked up in the Metropolitan Division as the New Jersey Devils, not far behind. The New York Rangers are also in the race, but not quite as much uh, competing for first overall in the Metro. When it comes to the overall Eastern Conference, Carolina has no chance of catching Boston. So Carolina, if they are to win the Metro, would be the second seed overall in the Eastern Conference. Now, on the road, Canes have a very impressive record. 23-8-6, a goal differential of plus 53. These two teams have met once before this season. It was all the way back in January the 5th when the Nashville Predators were in Carolina and secured a 5-3 victory. Nashville had five different scores, but the story of the game and the story maybe of the season comes out of this game. UC Soros breaking a franchise record. 64 saves on 67 shots again in regulation against the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, the Canes' most recent stretch of action, let's go back and talk about their last five games. Back to March the 28th, a 4 to nothing loss versus Tampa Bay. They followed it up on the 30th with a 3-2 loss at Detroit. On April the 1st, a 3 nothing win at Montreal. On the 2nd of April, a 2-1 to win versus New York Islanders. And most recently, on the 4th of April, a 3-2 to overtime win versus the Ottawa Senators. Now, Injuries are going to be impacting this matchup for sure. For the Nashville Persons, it's been impacting everything they've been doing as of late. I cannot possibly list all of the Nashville Persons players that are injured, so I will list what are potentially players that could be back in the lineup over the next couple of games. We've heard Roman Yossi could be back in the lineup any day now, but we still have not seen it. Luzon and Carey also on the defensive side of things are out. Uh, Forsberg has been out for a considerable amount of of time, Cole Smith, Parson, and of course, Duchesne is uh, not going to be back before the end of the season. Now, let's take a look at the NHL rankings between this matchup for the Nashville Predators. They don't stack up very well against Carolina Hurricanes in a lot of these different metrics, but let's take you through it. In the goals for category, 2.74 on the season for Nashville is 27th overall in the NHL, while the Canes are generating 3.21 goals per game. That is 16th best in the NHL. When it comes to the goals against category, 2.93 for the Nashville Predators, giving up per game is 12th best in the league, while the Carolina Hurricanes are only giving up 2.54. That is second best overall in the league. Shots for 29.7 for Nashville. It's 24th in the league. 34.9 for Carolina. That is third best in the NHL. And the Nashville Predators already giving up 27th most shots in the league, 332 well, they're going up against the team that is first in this category. The Canes only giving up 25.8 shots per game over the course of the season. When it comes to the special teams, the Nashville Predators, well, they don't match up very well with Carolina. <clears throat> and the power play, 17.6% conversion rate for Nashville. It's 27th best in the NHL. 41 out of 233 opportunities on the season, while the Canes power play is 20th in the league. 48 out of 234 opportunities. That is a 20.5% conversion rate on the penalty kill. As good as the Nashville Predators power penalty kill has been as of late, 81.4% kill rate, 11th best in the NHL. 48 power play goals against. It is very impressive, but the Canes are just better. 84% kill rate their second overall in the NHL and they've only given up 38 power play goals against on the season when it comes to individual statistics we always go back and we talk about the five top scores for each team and the potential goaltending matchup so let's start on the Nashville Predators side of things the home team side of things the top three scores for the Nashville Predators at this time are all out injured Captain Roman Yossi 18 and 41 for 59 Duchesne 22 goals 34 assists 56 points Philip Forsberg 19 goals 23 assists for 42 points and then the Nashville Predators active leading scorer Tommy Novak 17 goals 24 assists for 41 points now on the season only the fourth Nashville Predator to break the 40 point mark this entire season that is impressive stuff glass is at now at 14 goals and 19 assists for 33 points UC Soros expected to get the start in net 30 22 and 7 a 916 percentage 2.76 goals against average and again mentioned it last time he faced off against Carolina Hurricanes broke the franchise record 64 saves 
on 67 shots against. That also included breaking the single period record for saves by a Nashville Predators goaltender. Now, stats on the Carolina Hurricanes side of things. It's 27 goals and 41 to 68 points is the top for Carolina Hurricanes. Sebastian Ajo is there at number two. 34 goals that will lead the Carolina Hurricanes plus 30 assists for 64 points. Burns out on the blue line. 14 goals, 42 assists, 56 points. Svechnikov usually does very good against National Predators. 23 goals, 32 assists for 55 points overall. And Kotkiemi, 15 and 22 for 37 in net Anderson who's had a very good career against the National Predators 29 and won a 904 save percentage a 2.42 goals against average for the Nashville Predators it's pivotal that they try to find a way to pick up at least one more point against the first place in the Metropolitan Division Carolina Hurricanes they just did it against the first place team in the Pacific Division the Vegas Golden Knights can they continue their run down this murderer's road that is the end of their season schedule the toughest strength of schedule in the entirety of the NHL and the Preds have to surpass two teams to get into the playoffs out right now by just three points the Nashville Predators having some fun here at the end of the season with the youth movement already well underway we'll find out how they did against the Vegas Golden Knights that's got you all set up for the Preds and the Canes now let's go and talk about the Rebirth Sports full game recap it's coming up next on the Renegades of Puck podcast Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to April 4th of the year 2023 when the National Predators were hosting the Vegas Golden Knights to close out the regular season series. John Hines deploys his lines in the following way. After the say of Glass and Tomasino make up your first line, Sherwood Novak and Evangelista make up your second line. Trenton, Sisson, and Asplund. Leonard, Jankowski, and McCarron make up your bottom six. McDonough and Favreau, Stastny, and Barry. Gravel and Foote make up your defensive pairings, just like they penned it up coming out of training camp. Lankinen gets the start in net versus the Vegas Golden Knights on the second night of back-to-backs. National Purse traveling back home from Dallas, now welcoming in Vegas. We're only 38 seconds into the first period. Lankinen's coming up with his first save of the game. It's on Carlson. That's his first touch at 118 of the first period. Lankinen comes up with the save on Eichel. At 341, Lankinen comes up with a save on Peter Angel, plus Howden's follow-up. 534, Quick finally checking into the game with a save on on Barry 650 of the first period Tommy Novak 16th goal of the season to backhand off the rush he was sprung on the long pass by Luke Evangelista the Nashville Purs pick up a one nothing lead over the Vegas Golden Knights on Tommy Novak's 16th goal of the season at 729 of the first Howden's off to the box two minutes for tripping on Gravel only one shot on goal for the Nashville Prince Evangelista not credited with a shot on goal but had the best look coming from a sharp angle the net was wide open Evangelista put the puck up high 1123 of the first period quick comes up with a save on off and a save off of the rush really good strong rush right there 1250 the first Barbashev's off the box two minutes for holding in the offensive zone Tommy Novak back to work again in this first period his second goal of the game his 17th goal of the season a rebound put back from the circle he was the first one to find the loose puck fires it back into the net before anybody can really be aware of what's going on that's going to be preds a two nothing lead on home ice over the vegas golden knights at 14 22 though of the first period asplund is off to the box two minutes for tripping immediately mcdonough is going to pick up a penalty for high sticking this is going to lead to a five on three scenario for a total of 146 this is where Lankinen is about to clock in. Lankinen comes up with a save on Peter Angelo. Then he comes up with a save on March or so. Then he follows that up with a save on Eichel at close range. And overall, just incredible on the entirety of the PK. Under siege the entire time. Coming up with one save after another. And all of them are extremely high quality. Perhaps, perhaps one of Lankinen's best sequences of the entire season came in this five-on-three scenario. At 17.01 of 
the first period. It looks like the Nashville Predators are going to extend their lead as Barry puts the puck in the net. The goal, though, is waved off. It was determined to be kicked in. Yes, I saw that when they showed the replay. Uh, this, I wrote down, was a missed opportunity for the Nashville Predators. They missed putting the puck in the net two other times just before this. The puck was trickling in the crease, and Barry, his stick was tied up, so there was not much that he could do, but redirecting the puck in with an obvious kicking motion, I just wish it could have found a way to make this goal count and well pay attention you'll understand why but that goal is waved off and it's a missed opportunity at the end of the first period though the Preds who have a two nothing lead being outshot by Vegas 15 to 12 like it coming up with a total of 15 saves in the first period 253 of the second period he's back to work already coming up with a save on Bluger at the six minute mark of the second period we see Peter Angelo getting his 10th goal this season making it two to one now in favor of Nashville Vegas on the board it was a shot that bounced off of of Gravel. Gravel did so much incredible work there at the five on three and on the PK and blocking shots and then have this shot block essentially off of him and into that was just unfortunate because he's playing so good there early in the game. 658 in the second period. Lankinen comes up with a save on Martinez. 941 of the second. Lankinen comes up with a save on March or so after heavy pressure. Second period, not nearly as high event as the first period was. 1124 of the second period. Barbashev's off to the box. Two minutes for putting the puck over the glass and the Vegas penalty kill just simply outstanding. As a matter of fact, not only did they not give up a shot against, but they gave up almost zero zone time in the total power play for the Nashville Predators seizing momentum off of that kill at 13:39, just after the kill. Peter Angelo's 11th goal of the season, his second goal of the period. It comes off of the inside of the far post from the circle. He beat Lankin and clean and puts that puck in just perfectly, tying the game up at two apiece. So you've got Novak two and Peter Angelo two in the second period. 15:04 of the second period, Lankin comes up with a save on McNabb. Very low event hockey to round out the rest of the second period it would be Vegas now out shooting Nashville after 40 minutes of hockey 26 to 16 the Preds struggle to generate any offense in the second period they are starting to show signs of running on fumes we go to the third period we're at 339 in and quick comes up with a save on glass 435 Lankin comes up with a save on Martinez and I made a note right here that the national players just struggling uh, to gain control and go on offense every time they seem to be able to finally get the puck they get it out to the red line they'd have to dump it and go for a change because they'd been pinned in their own zone for just so long on defense at 739 of the third period quick comes up with a save on often a save at 1256 of the third period Lankin comes up with a save on Peter Angelo. Vegas is just controlling and tilting the entirety of the ice. Intense zone time possession. The Preds are seemingly completely out of gas at this point. 15.30 of the third period. Lankanen comes up with a penalty. Two minutes delay of game. The Vegas Golden Knights were just in the zone seemingly forever. Puck in the air. Lankanen backs into the post, the crossbar. Not very hard, but enough to knock it off. It was deemed intentional. That is deemed to be a delay of game. I disagree with the call, but I understand why the officials would make the call when they did. One shot on goal for the Vegas Golden Knights, a very strong PK. So the Preds respond and bail out their netminder on this one. After all, he's been bailing them out the entire game. 1859 of the third period. Quick has to come up with a save on McDonough. It is the Preds' only push of the period at all. As a matter of fact, the end of regulation, the Nashville Predators are outshot 32 to 24 overall. Again, Lankinen secures this point for the Nashville Predators in regulation. Extra point on the line as we head into overtime. We're 113 into the overtime session. It's quick coming up with a save on Novak at 253 of the overtime session. March or so is off to the box. Two minutes for holding, and that's when the Nashville Predators are going to convert glass his 14th goal the season goes in off of the d skate so each team gets a friendly deflection off of a defenseman and into the net in this one the national prayers 
defeat the Vegas Golden Knights 3-2. Vegas outshoots Nashville 32-27. to At this point in the season, Vegas will be happy with that one point. Never happy with a loss, but Vegas will be happy picking up that one point because that's them closer to picking up the number one seat in the Western Conference. And of course, the Nashville Predators are incredibly happy picking up those two points because it keeps them very much alive when it comes to the wildcard race. And Calgary falling tonight on the schedule. That definitely helps the Nashville Predators right now. Now only one point behind Calgary with a game in hand. Only three points behind Winnipeg. The same amount of games play and a head-to-head matchup coming up. That is going to be impressive stuff. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We've got analysis to talk about. So that was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Stick Caps love respect to everyone over at Rebirth Sports. Sure to appreciate everything that they do to help us out here in the trenches. We've got the Renegades of Puck. Sean's here. Brian's here. I'm here. we got analysis. we got box score. we got stats. we got opinions. And we got all that coming up right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. That's all coming up after these messages. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, to bottle workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, Go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Lanking into this game, 30 out of 32 overall for the game. 15 of 15 in the first period of the five-on-three sequence was just incredible. Perhaps Lankinen's best sequence of the season, easily one of his strongest sequences of the season, just Otherworldly save after otherworldly save against some pretty high skilled Vegas Golden Knights players. Liking it very impressive out there in the first period. Again, the five on three makes the game. That sequence saves the Nashville Predators in this one, allowed them to maintain the lead. 8 7 1 on the season, a 9 1 7 save percentage, 2.72 goals against average on the season. I got to tell you, Lankinen is a very good backup for this Nashville Predators team. He will more than likely get one more start this season, but I guess that depends on where the Nashville Predators sit as far as this last wildcard spot goes. One more back-to-back next Thursday and next Friday to close out the season. UC Soros, if necessary, could easily go in both of those games, but this is about what Lankinen got done tonight. 30 out of 32 and a highly impressive effort overall. He definitely got the Nashville Predators at first point in regulation as an National players were on fumes for large portions of the second and the entire third period. Tommy Novak just continues to impress. Two goals in this game, plus an assist, three points. Now on the season, 41 points in 46 games. As far as points per game goes, he's right up there with Roman Yossi for team leaders, and he is also the active team leader in scoring at this point. Tommy Novak just continues to impress. He finds loose pucks. He takes care of business off of the rush. He has an excellent shot. He has great vision, and he just continues improving. It was all about getting his confidence after last season. He's found it now, and he can be a full-time Nashville Predator for quite some time. Again, 41 points in 46 games, and currently the active leading scorer for the Nashville Predators. When it comes to Glass, he had a goal in in this game, pretty important goal. He also picked up assists, two total points. That goal was the overtime game winner. And again, 33 points in total on the season. Just tremendous growth. He was considered to be a project when first acquired by the Nashville Predators. And it was not seeming to be going all that great for a little while there. But now he's really found his groove here at the NHL level this season. Highly impressive stuff again. 33 points on the season, two points in this game. And the overtime game winning goal. How do you pick up that game winning goal? goal he took the puck to the hard area drove to the net right along the goal line and then banks it in off of the d skate is the high hockey iq so much on this play that he intentionally shot it off of McNabb skating in or was he just simply trying to feed the puck across to tomasino who was battling with McNabb on the far post 
It was a game-winning goal. That's all that matters for the Nashville Predators tonight. And Glass picks up his 32nd and 33rd points of the season. One more young player to talk about, Luke Evangelista, picked up an assist in this game. He continues to be in the middle of everything. The home run pass that he utilized to spring the first goal of the game for Novak. Highly impressive stuff. And he just continues doing all of the good little things out there. Yeah, he's got room to grow, and that's my favorite part about Luke Evangelista. He's playing at this high of a level, and he's not even close to reaching his full potential. How could he possibly be? He barely had any AHL experience when he got called up to the NHL. He's going to have plenty of experience by the end of this season. Very curious to see how it all adds up to training camp coming up later on this summer. Also, on the defensive side of things, want to talk about Barry. He picked up an assist in this game, had three shots on goal, 22, 54 in total time on ice. His work on the power play, great. The National Purse had really good zone time. And as a matter of fact, the National Purse also converted twice on the power play. So Barry was part of the best power play in the NHL when he was in Edmonton. He knows how to quarterback a power play. And in Roman Yossi's absence, he has definitely taken over quarterbacking the power play for the National Purse and doing a quite a nice job. 22-54 in total time on ice. His overall importance since being traded to this Nashville Predators, it's hard to quantify. He has been easily one of the stabilizing forces as a veteran, and he's been one of the most consistent performers since he's been traded to the Nashville Predators. Matias Ekholm is playing very well for the Edmonton Oilers, and Barry is playing very well for the Nashville Predators. So far, this trade seems like it's coming out fairly fairly even what the national purse did do though in that trades get out from under a significant long and high dollar contract so barry performing very well he is incredibly important and impactful to the run that the nashville predators are currently on listen i need to get to the renegades of puck chauncey smith is in the trenches with us. He's filed this report from A to Z Sports. You can find him on Twitter at SCSNSH. He's the one and only Sean C. Smith, and he's right here now on Renegades of Puck TV. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades. So yesterday, I'm going to be honest, we had some pretty uh, brief analysis from me uh, talking about the Preds' loss to the Dallas Stars where I said that it sucked really bad. And I stand by that criticism, but... What I'm going to say now is that uh, I'll keep it brief once more for the win over the Vegas Golden Knights. If I'm going to if I'm going to keep my comments very brief for a loss, let me keep them very brief for a win, but wow. That was really exciting. And and I'll also say this. You're getting to see a young core of a team develop and you're beginning to see what the future can look like. Now, I'm well aware. I'm well aware of the fact that there are several veteran players that are going to be back next season and be healthy and be playing. But what you have to understand is that this team is building a culture. They're building a new culture. And they're going to be able to merge that with the healthy players coming back next season. And I think it's going to be really exciting to watch because what you've seen is the team develop confidence if you, if you think realistically about this, and, and let's, let's be very, very blunt here. If I told you at the beginning of the season that there would be a late season game against a team that is playoff bound, where there was a lot on the line for the Predators in order to keep their hopes for the playoffs alive, and that they would go into overtime. And that overtime, you would be playing the players that played in overtime and that you had to rely on them for a win, and I said that they ended up winning, you'd probably say I was crazy. Now, but I bet, and, and maybe I'm wrong here, if you've, if you've been paying as close attention as I have, and, and maybe you have, maybe you haven't. When those guys hit the ice, while you may have been nervous because it was overtime, I don't think your hope was lost and said, oh, these guys in overtime, it's not going to happen. Cody Glass, Philip Tomasino, Tommy Novak, Okay, the beginning of the season, if that's who I told you it was going to come down to, would you chalk that up as a win? And my guess is no. But because you probably didn't go into that overtime with a total lack of confidence in those guys getting the job done and felt, you know, hey, they could probably do this. They have a chance. That tells me that things are going really well for this team. Now, there's a big ugly elephant in the room that we all may need to talk about soon, and that's that 
who is the one pulling these wins out of these players? Hmm. Because I think for a long time, when the Preds weren't doing so well, all of the blame went directly to head coach John Hines. John Hines is still the head coach, and he's pulling incredible performances out of these players. He still has a year left on his contract. Do you think it's possible that their performance down the stretch here is enough to allow him to hold on to that spot for another year and to complete his contract and see what he can do with this core along with the returning core of currently injured veteran players? Could be very interesting to see how this plays out. I'm going to leave you with that to chew on. I'm sure there'll be a lot to think about after you think about what I just said. So, Renegades, that's all I got. Charlie, I'm going to send it back over to you. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. When it comes to the box score, Tommy Novak led the Nashville Predators in goals with two. Glass also had one. That one came in overtime and was the game winner. Three goals total, all from the forwards. Now, different story when it comes to the assists. Nobody with more than one assist in the game. We had Four forwards pick up an assist in this game and one defenseman. Evangelista, Glass, Novak, and Tomasino all with assists. And Barry also picks up an assist out there on the blue line. When it comes to shots on goal, Tommy, Novak, and Yakov Trenin each with four to pace the Nashville Predators on the forward side of things. On the defensive side of things, Barry and Stastny all with three apiece. So Stastny also making an effort in his second game as a Nashville Predator. Tied for second on the team in shots on goal with three. When it comes to block shots, Gravel, it was... Very easy to notice him out there in this particular category. Uh, he was blocking shots when the Preds were shorthanded. He was giving up the body, sacrificing himself. And yes, one block shot, unfortunately, goes off his backside and into the net. But Gravel led the Nashville Predators in block shots with six. Dante Fabro, another game of playing good, hard, tough, strong hockey and good, solid defense out there. Three, uh, four block shots in this game. McDonough had three. And again, Jeff Middleton, who you know from the Renegades of Puck, uh, made the commentary on social media on his Twitter account that you can't say anything good about Dante Fabro because there's a certain part of this Preds fan base that's just simply never going to accept that Dante Fabro is improving, evolving, or that he can do anything good. I'm going to tell you, Dante Fabro has turned the corner and you need to start paying more attention to the nuance of what he's doing. Does he still make mistakes out there from time to time? He sure as hell does, but he has certainly solidified his game and he is putting in more and more hard and difficult minutes and going to harder and tougher areas in the D zone all the time. So I wanted to give Dante Fabro a little bit of credit and also Jeff Middleton. Appreciate Jeff Middleton out there on social media representing the renegades of puck. When it comes to the hits category in here, it's exactly what I'm talking about. So Fabro second in blocked shots with four. When it comes to hits, he's second with three, just behind Colton Sissons with four. McCarron also had three. Tomasino also had three. Not the most physical game the natural players on the second night of back-to-backs and Vegas is a fast they are a physical team but they are a faster team than they are a physical team and I know that that makes sense because you've been watching the Vegas Golden Knights these last few years it's uh kind of the way they go about it you can't hit what you can't catch so Vegas rolls four lines that goes out there with high speed and intensity and they just simply skate away from your physical play so Sissons four Fabro three McCarron Tomasino also three hits when it comes to time on ice Philip Tomasino 1958 total time on ice that led all forwards Sissons at 1932 Novak at 18 55 when it comes to the defensive side of things Ryan McDonough just continues to be the most stabilizing a professional defenseman that the Nashville Predators have 24 15 in total time on ice that led the Nashville Predators Barry 22 54 second on the defense core in that Lincoln at 30 out of 32 nine 
power play saves nine power play saves uh, just incredible that five on three sequence is, is definitely something that needs to be remembered and something that you get talked about more on the power play the national prayers were two out of four the preds 50 percent on the power play very rare impressive that's good news on the penalty kill the national prayers were three out of three so they continue having a superior pk unit here down the stretch of the season that is certainly helping them out when it comes to this race that's going to do it for the box score taking a look inside all the different categories and the numbers but that's not going to do it for the end of the talk about the numbers he runs the Renegade Analytics Desk. He's got the numbers you need to know, the charts you need to see from on the forecheck.com. He is, of course, the one and only Brian Bastin. And you can watch Brian right now on Renegades of Buck TV. Thanks a lot, Charlie. On a wonderful Hockey is for Everyone night in Bridgestone Arena, Nashville Predators bounced back from an awful showing last night against the Stars to defeat the Golden Knights, holding on to a 3-2 overtime victory after taking an early 2-0 lead in the first period. Now, it's no secret that Nashville's schedule is tough. It's the toughest in the league, of course. But tonight's win made their hopes just that much more plausible for the playoffs. Combine that with the Calgary Flames falling to Chicago tonight in regulation, and Nashville remi remains very much alive. In fact, an 11% chance at the playoffs. And that's the topic of tonight's one big stat. So let's start by looking at the standings. Winnipeg was idle tonight, of course, and they sit at 89 points with five, game re five games remaining, so that puts them at a maximum potential point total of 99. Calgary lost, as we said, and so they sit at 87 points with four games remaining for a max of 95. And of course, your Nashville Predators won, sitting at, now sitting at 86 points with five games remaining for a max of 96. And that max number I keep mentioning makes all the difference when it comes to the playoffs. Now, the first thing you should take away, Nashville has an advantage over Calgary now. They sit just one point behind the Flames, but they do have a game in hand. Nashville has five more games, Calgary has four. And they've got a higher max now. So that'll make a huge difference by the time that Nashville meets Calgary next week, which could cause a huge swing and actually eliminate Calgary by that point in time. But on the other hand, because Winnipeg is currently sitting at, with a three-point cushion and the same amount of games remaining, they just have to win three games, and they could cl clinch a playoff spot. In fact, they could win four games, and no matter if Nashville won out the rest of their, uh, their this season, they still wouldn't make the playoffs. Now, there's 11 games left in the season between these three teams, and one of the most important is actually tomorrow. Calgary travels to Winnipeg on the second half of their back-to-back, -back, and depending on the outcome, Nashville could end the night between three, and f three to five points back from Winnipeg and just either one to three points behind Calgary. The best possible outcome, this is what you should be rooting for, would be a Calgary win in regulation because that would put both Winnipeg and Nashville, uh, Winnipeg and Calgary at 89 points at just, and Nashville just three points back. And of course, that, those, that game right there is going to be massive because the next two games for the Predators after that, after the game against Carolina on Thursday, is Calgary and Winnipeg. They're going to both of those teams, and so they've got a massive, massive thing. So tomorrow's game could make a huge difference, as does the Carolina game for Nashville on Thursday. But this weekend is probably when the playoffs will be pretty close to being decided. Most likely that you know one of the two Canadian teams will probably be knocked out by virtue of the matchups that they have, and Nashville could come out of it either in firm control they could actually be leading for the playoff spot after the weekend is over or they could be completely out of the race by then nashville just has to win two of their next five games and they can still mathematically be um into the playoffs but that's still a slim chance so there's a lot of work left to do but the picture gets a lot clearer and nashville has one more thing which may or may not come into um play here but Nashville has two games after Calgary's final game. So that's, that's two games that Nashville knows that Calgary can't gain anymore. And they have one game after Winnipeg's final game. So that's two points that they have in their pocket that they can use if they need it, and they probably will. But that's something that all they have to do is win, and they get those two points. And by then, it might be, it might be the most important thing because this playoff race could either be over pretty quickly or go all the way down to the wire. And we could see this Nashville Predators team, the, guy, the, the team that sold at the deadline, sneak in and get the eighth playoff spot. But still, only a ni uh, only 11% chance of that happening so far. So we got a lot to do, a lot to see, and Nashville's gotta keep going out there and winning games. And that's tonight's one big stat. 
I'm Crazy Charlie Sonia, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's ship and trips travel.com and just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in Paradise July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Porto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip-flops and fun in the sun. The Nashville Purs at this moment as we sit here in the bunker, they are three points out of a playoff spot. Now, before the Nashville Predators suffered all these injuries, before they dismantled before the trade deadline, the Predators were much further out of the playoff picture. Now, three points out with head-to-head -head games coming up against Winnipeg and Calgary upcoming weekend to end the road schedule for the Nashville Predators this season. Now, with only being three points out head-to-head -head games, they have one game in hand on Calgary. If they're able to win these two games head-to-head -head against Winnipeg and against Calgary, it will go a long way to the Nashville Predators solidifying the second wild card spot in the Western Conference. There are 10, 10 possible points left for this Nashville Predators team. They have to find a way to collect more points than Winnipeg and more points than Calgary. Winning head to head would be the most important way to go ahead and handle that. Wild Card 2 will face the Vegas Golden Knights. That's more than likely going to be difficult for the Central Division winner to catch the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, six points behind with just five games to go. So, with 10 points left and a possible series against the Vegas Golden Knights on the line in the first round of the NHL playoffs. It is absolutely possible, and no matter what happens, no matter what happens for this National Predators team over the final five games of the season, every single one of these games is going to be incredibly important, and the Nashville Predators youth movement is going to get to play in a bunch of highly significant, important, impactful games against teams that are either in the playoffs or fighting for their playoff lives. The Carolina Hurricanes are a first place team. The Vegas Golden Knights, a first place team. Minnesota, Colorado, either one of those teams could be a first place team when the Preds play them next week. And of course, Winnipeg and Calgary fighting for their playoff lives at this point. The Nashville Predators young players are getting the best opportunity that they could. They're making a run at a playoff spot, playing significant minutes, building chemistry, becoming a part of their community each and every night they are becoming more and more beloved by the Nashville Predators fan base the baby Preds maybe the first time I saw that on social media tonight not a fan of the phrase but I do understand the sentiment behind it this youth movement for the Nashville Predators is so well underway it's incredible to watch it's fun to cover and this last five games all we can ask for is that we still have meaningful hockey to talk about when it comes to the Nashville Purs. And this is as meaningful as it could possibly be. A first round series against the Vegas Golden Knights. The team the Nashville Predators happen to outlast and survive against on home ice tonight with their backup goaltender. My, wouldn't that be fascinating to watch. Cash Vegas versus Nash Vegas. And we'll see how that all goes. We'll figure that all out when we get there. Five games to go in the season. Every one of them is going to be incredibly important. And the Renegades of Puck will be right here in the bunker to break it all down for you. Pride night at Bridgestone Arena. Great job by the team wearing the jerseys out there. It's become such a source of controversy for absolutely no reason. The reason I don't make a big deal about it right here is because it's not a BFD to us here on the show to represent Pride and to see the team with their jerseys on out there. It's just good business good news. It doesn't have to be a controversial moment. It is something we can all celebrate. Hockey's for everyone. The Nashville Predators went a long way to showing that tonight. That's going to do it for operation number 741 for the Renegades of Puck. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stick taps, love, and respect. I appreciate love, and every one of you will be back in the bunker in the next couple of days talking Nashville Predators hockey, and we'll start talking more Milwaukee Admirals hockey right here on the Renegades of Puck. Podcast.